guys welcome back to keeping up with Shar. make sure that you like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel if you want to be informed about a whole lot of stuff see my discovery of who i'm becoming as a woman and fashion whenever i'm into it you dig <laughs> So I have been watching my friend Misha YouTube channel. I will put her YouTube channel in the link below. And what she did was she, I think every week she did a tribute for the whole month of March for like um, the black community. And I really liked that and it, inspired, and it inspired me to do something, a tribute to Black History Month. But Given that the month of March, well, literally almost the last week of March, finals are happening at TSU, Tennessee State University. As you guys know, I attend Tennessee State University located in Nashville, Tennessee. So that week is usually busy for me. And then the weeks before that, it was busy for me as well. So I wanted to make sure that I get this video out, even if it's March 1st. <laughs> And I'm back home in Miami, as you can see. Well, not as you can see, but I'm back home in Miami. Um, and I'm in my nephew's fort. He have a little fort over here with all his toys and everything. I just wanted to sit in this area because I've been came up with this idea, but this is very a chilled, laid back area. So I really wanted to do it right here. And it give me, you know, laid back vibes. Because the game that I'm about to give you is going to be some harsh stuff but it's going to be very it's free game for the black community and i what i did not want to do was not do something that was helpful to us on what we should know like one thing you're definitely going to get from my channel is what i have learned because i'm one of them type of people i don't like keeping everything that i learned away from people because you never know when it can help somebody but let's forget all the talking and let's get into the video, you guys. So I decided to do a video analyzing the song of the story of OJ by Sean Carter, known as Jay-Z. I have loved Sean Carter. Well, Jay-Z, as you guys know him, or Sean Carter, you know, you never know. I have been definitely playing close attention to him for like the last two years because I love the way how he moved as a businessman and how he carry himself as a person. And I adore him and his wife. And I don't adore them for the many reasons that a lot of other people adore them for. Like I'm one of them type of people that like to analyze everything. And I'm not saying that other people don't, you know, analyze them for this. I'm just saying that I love Beyonce. I love Jay-Z music, I love her music, I love their performances, I love... Basically, what I'm trying to say is, I do not... I love them for all the things that they do, but I analyze them more than what the things that they do. I look at the things that they do that don't get broadcast, because that's just how the media is. Sometimes a lot of stuff that a lot of African Americans do that are positive are not being broadcast. But we ain't getting into that today. Um, let's get into the analysis of Jay-Z video. Now, before I get into the analysis, the, the biggest picture about this, from my understanding, is financial literacy. Now, everyone has their own opinion of everything. Every art piece, every music video, every song, everything. Everybody has their own opinion. But this is what I got from the video, looking at the lyrics, analyzing the lyrics, and understanding the person that he was talking about you know so it's about financial literacy and i feel like in a black community we do not understand how important financial literacy is and how important it is for you to have credit and to buy things and make it your own and not rent it <laughs> it's like you know it's a lot of people that are rich but they're not wealthy See, what end up happening is you be rich and then a couple of lines down, your kids don't be as rich as you were. That doesn't make sense to me. 
So let's get into the video, guys, before I get, you know, I'm not angry or anything. I just want you guys to be aware of this because my uncle, Alan, always taught me about this. And a lot of other my family members have taught me about this. And I just feel like I'm giving you guys free game. So listen up. <laughs> so the first line of Jay-Z's song, The Story of OJ, says, Skin is skin. Skin black. My skin is black. My black. My skin is yellow. What I got from this is... No matter if you're black, well, let's say it like this. No matter if you're dark skin, red, caramel, brown skin, whatever you guys want to call each other, you're black. Is <laughs> is no way around it. it you're black. <laughs> like, you, you don't get a pass. You're black. And that's just that on that. <laughs> Full disclosure, this video has the word... The N word being used, the song has the N word being used repeatedly. So I'm not going to say the N word, but I'll just say N word instead of saying the word. It say light N, dark N, real N, rich N, poor N, house N, fill N, still N, still N. Nobody if you're rich, black, poor, house working you're still you know you're 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 still one and i feel like we need to start understanding that and stop having this mindset of the crab in the bucket to where it's like oh and and all you guys know what the crab in the bucket is and if you don't know i'm telling you anyway it's like we have this mindset to where it's like we're pulling each other down when reality, we shouldn't be doing that because it's so many resources out here and it's so many opportunities for everybody. And I'm just a firm believer in what's for you is going to happen for you. No matter what anybody says or does, it's going to be for you. So I just feel like by us breaking each other down, it's not helping us when we do go to face the world that's already against us. You know, I just feel like we need to stick together. That's what I got from that. That's definitely what I got from that. Um, then he has the line of when OJ was a very famous, well, he still is a very famous football player. Um, when he was in his prime of his football career, let's say that, he said in one of his interviews, he said, I'm not black, I'm OJ. So Jay-Z said in his song, OJ like, I'm not black, I'm OJ. And Jay-Z was like, okay. <laughs> like, okay. I'm going to leave that thought there. Then this is what I find so remarkable. Remarkable. He say, Jay-Z say, I'm going to play the corners where the hustlers be. I told him, please don't die of a neighborhood that your mama ran. Take your drug money and buy the neighborhood. That's how you rinse it. Now, when I say that line, see what y'all need to start doing when y'all be listening to this music is actually reading the lyrics. <laughs> like I am big on that now, actually reading the lyrics. Ever since like I heard this like last year, I started reading well, when I get a chance to read the lyrics because now that I'm in college, I really don't. And then I work, I really don't have a lot of time on my hands. So. When I have plans set in play, I do those plans and I try to fit other things that I really like to do into that. But that speak volumes. Like you're really beefing over a block that's not yours. You think a neighborhood chores, you don't own it. Your mama renting it, you renting it. How does that work? No, we have to start owning stuff in our own name. Like we we talk about Tyler Perry and this, that, and the third, but one thing you can't say about Tyler Perry is that he don't own his stuff. Everything with his name on it, he own it. <laughs> Jay-Z, he own his music, he own it. So anytime that you play it, he gets money. It's not owned by a company anymore. It's his now. <laughs> Yo Gotti just got 
his own so now every time you buy his music it goes straight to him that's the type of moves that they're making that we need to start making it's not about let's let's get back let's, let's go back to the video goes in to say i bought every v12 engine wish i could take it back to the beginning i could have bought a place in dumbo before it was dumbo for like two million that same building today is worth 25 million. Guess how I feel? Dumbo. <laughs> that sounds funny, but that's giving you game. Like he was buying all these cars when he was coming up as a rapper. All these fast cars, nice cars, jewelry, all this. But in reality, he should have been buying stuff where he was from so he can flip that, make more money and make the hood a better place. Because in reality, that's all what we want. We want what's best for our people. So if we want what's best for our people, we have to start buying properties where we're from. <laughs> that's that's free game, that's, that's how that works. So when you start getting money, you don't forget where you came from and say, oh, that's not my problem, no. I'm not saying that you can't change, you can change the world. No, you it's one step at a time that you can do that. And owning everything you have. Like, then Jay-Z goes in and say, you wanna know what's more important than throwing away money at a strip club? Credit. <laughs> oh my God. You guys know about this. You guys know about credit. So, okay, yeah, you might have $100,000, but why don't you have credit? Credit is what you what gets you everything. In reality, not money, <laughs> credit. Like, if you got good credit, you can literally go and get a car and not put no money down for it. That's boss moves, not showing the people that you got the money for it. What? Okay. What? That's boss moves, good credit. You have good credit. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, just saying. Then this really gets me. He say, you ever wonder why Jewish people own all the property in America? This how they did it. Then in a video, at the end of, video, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show the whole video of Jay-Z song. And I really don't care if I get copyrighted because this is my tribute to Black History Month to everyone. He showed a dollar bill. So we always are fussing about how we don't, <laughs> is, we're always fussing about how Jewish people, well, I know a lot of like, I know like sometimes a lot of, I hear a lot of lawyers saying a lot of Jewish people own a lot of firms. They own a lot of firms because they know how to invest their money, save their money, and spend their money. Like, one thing my uncle always told me about, like, concerts, he was like, you know, black people go and we spend so much money on our shoes, our outfit, our hair, our hair, our, I'm sorry, our hair, our nails, and our makeup. And we go to the concert to see whoever, Beyonce, Jay-Z, whoever, we go to the concert and we already spend like $300, $200 on the concert or 50 whatever. But we spend so much money on our clothes to go to the concert. And then you see all the other people there, you know, like Bill Gates and all the people that actually got money. <laughs> they don't go to them games with Gucci. Fendi, Prada. They don't do that. <laughs> they not doing that. Because it's like, I'm going to the concert to have fun. Why do I have all this expensive stuff on? Why Why am I doing that? And then you get mad at somebody because, you know, I'm not even getting into it. Look, let me say this. Then you get mad at somebody when somebody must step on your shoes because in reality, you cannot afford them. So now you're mad that they're dirty. It's another quote Jay-Z said that I live by. If you have to save up for it you can't afford it <laughs> like you can't you can't you can't afford it but i mean sometimes we do save up for things but as far as like shoes clothes like going on trips that's 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 a net like people do that you know 
people that's even rich they save up for trips but as far as saving up for shoes and stuff like and clothes you can't afford it if you have to save up money for it. like you you taking out money <laughs> yeah and jay-z goes in to say financial freedom my only hope i'm gonna say forget living rich and dying broke i learned this lesson literally two three four weeks ago like i asked myself i said charlene like don't think I'm crazy. I, I be talking to myself sometimes. As long as I don't answer back to myself, my mama say, then you're fine. <laughs> but um, I said, Charlene, what do you consider success to be? And growing up, I thought success was having a lot of money and being able to get, give back to my community and create a lot of organizations to help young kids in my community because like I said a lot of organizations help me and people help me get to where I'm at today like I'm a I'm a firm believer in it takes a village to raise a child like my uncle and my mom played a big part of my life but a lot of other people played a big part of my life too like <laughs> a lot of other people um but it's like success for me it's not becoming one of the biggest lawyers in the world no success for me is becoming a lawyer having a lot of other side hustles to where i don't have one stream of income and being able to do pro bono cases every year at least five of them and one day one day creating a firm where i can have a lot of other amazing lawyers come and help people that are wrongly convicted and they don't have good lawyers to come and help them out saying so don't get into detail with what i'm saying there's a lot of the things that's going to go into that and then plus like as you get older your decisions and what you want to do change but that's what i consider success like i don't consider success as being the richest person in the world anymore no i just want to be financially free like <laughs> I don't want to have to worry about owing nobody no money. I don't want to worry about having someone come to take my house or car away. That's what I want. I don't care about being rich. I want to be able to give back to my community and a lot of other communities like mine where I grew up at, giving back to my mom, my uncle, and everyone else that helped me throughout my life, even if it was just to keep your head up. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> I don't have to be the richest person in the world. If that's not what I want, you know. Last lyrics that I'm going to analyze, and it's one of the most important ones. He said, I bought some artwork for one million. Two years later, it's worth two million. A few years later, it's worth eight million. I can't wait to give this to my children. Yeah, I think it's bougie. I'm like, it's fine. But I'm trying to give you a million dollar worth of game for 99. For $9.99. I turned that two to a four, four to an eight. I turned my life into a nice first week release date. Y'all yeah, out here still taking advances, huh? Me and my and taking real chances huh y'all on the gimme holding to your ear y'all y'all i'm sorry y'all on the gram holding money to your ear that's a disconnect we don't call that money over here now say that's just so much to analyze and just one thing but as far as like the art piece he's letting you guys know invest in yourself see i want to go into investing so bad but like i have learned that like right now as far as me going to school like I, I watch a lot of inspirational videos and then i feel like one of the inspirational videos i watch is eric thomas i think that's his name i don't know if i'm pronouncing his last name right but i'm gonna put his link in the bio as well so you guys can start watching him too on youtube he said one thing about like black quarterbacks on why they don't win the NFL and he hoped and he was saying that he hoped this don't 
offend nobody he was like it's because they're putting so much energy into two different things and he was like when you're a quarterback you're a quarterback don't try to be a quarterback and a runner back like you trying to do two different jobs so now you're splitting your your potential in half like you're trying to give a quarterback you trying to give your quarterback position 100 percent. you're trying to be a running back as well and you're trying to get at 100 percent. so it's like how that's why they have running back and receivers on the team like you be the quarterback <laughs> so basically what you're trying to say is you know focus on one thing and one of the things that i'm but not not focus on one thing but what he's trying to say is like don't be trying to spread yourself out too too like widely you know i'm in school right now i'm trying to get a degree therefore i am I'm not really going into the investing business just yet because you have to do your research. And right now I'm trying to get my degree. So I am researching investments, but at a minimum, like I'm not trying to put my money into something knowing that I really don't have the money right now to where I'll be upset if I don't get the money back that I think I'm going to get, you know? So I just feel like if you are going to invest, make sure that you, you are not investing like, you know, your phone bill money. <laughs> But it's the truth, like, because that investing is a gambling game. And if you are not aware of how it works, I just don't feel like you should be doing it. And it's okay for you to be ignorant with certain things because we're all ignorant with certain things. And I feel like when you realize that in your life, that's when you become free in your mind. Like, you don't have to know everything. And that's okay. That's why we learn every day about new things. So he basically saying like buy stuff and flip it. That's all he did. And then he's saying that like he's leaving this off for his kids. That's what we need to start doing. Like we have to start putting stuff in our names so it can be left for generations to generations to generations. Like that's what I'm on. Like I'm not on trying to rent something for the rest of my life. Well, how, that's not how I'm living. That's not how I'm trying to live. Like I want my kids, my nephews my nephews kids my brother's kids you know i want my my sisters my gossips my cousins like i want them to have something my little cousins i want them to have something you know when when i'm gone when everybody else that they know is gone they still have something you know and that's why i try my best to support black businesses whenever i can like i am let's get it straight i am a broke college student like everything i have i work for so, and then my family helped me out, but I don't expect them to help me out because at the end of the day, everybody has their own problems and have their own stuff going on. So yeah, you got to start investing and you have to start flipping and you have to stop spending your money on things that's not going to help you 10 years from now. Like I never believed in buying Jordans. I never, and I have nothing against Jordan. I really don't. I really have nothing against this man. I really don't have nothing against him. But I just would never buy his shoes because I'm not spending $200, $300 on them shoes that's going to be old two, three weeks from now. Like, I love him. I love all the stuff that he do for the black community. And I just feel like I don't have the money to be giving him $300. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I'll stick to the Nikes, the Pumas, and all the other stuff. I don't have, I'm not going to do that. And that's another thing. Stop making people force you into getting things you really don't want to get it, it makes no sense stop you free yourself go ahead and free yourself we're gonna get off that back to the lyrics then he said i'm giving you game for i'm giving you one million dollar game for 99 cent like that's why y'all need to start reading these lyrics man because like I feel like a lot of people, they be saying negative stuff about people and they don't really do their research. Like, do your research on people. Like, I remember when they said that Michael Jordan is funding a lot of black prisons. Like, this man is not funding black businesses. It's, black, I mean, prisons. Like, it's, it's bigger than Jordan. You think Jordan is under Nike? <laughs> he not, come on, he not funding prisons he's under nike how is he funding prisons all he he got a partnership with nike you know he's a part of them but he's not the one funding them like do your research but hey we ain't even we ain't even gonna get into that but um then it says y'all think it's bougie i'm like it's fine but i'm trying to give oh yeah you saying y'all think he bougie like that's another thing like 
just because somebody is confident in themselves and know what they want in their life and not here to play games or do crazy stuff stop calling them bougie like no they're not bougie they just want what they want know what they want like come on stop doing it <laughs> like please look up the definition of bougie please taking loans out knowing <laughs> that y'all can't pay it back like one of the things that kills me with like school is like the loans that you take out, you go splurge with it. Like you show people you never had nothing. Like why go do that? That makes no sense at all. Like you get your refund check and you go get some Gucci shoes, a Gucci shirt or some new J's or something like that. And then now you need money to pay for school. Or if you don't need money to pay for school, now you need this and you can't get it. Like, why are you going to go spend your refund check? You need that check. Go save it so you can pay off your loans and go pay them people back because that's not your money. <laughs> that's not your money. Like, how can... Uh, not your money, period. So, don't... If you know that... <laughs> if you know that you don't have this on a regular, it's fine. Like, go save it. Go save your money. Like... Or pay them people back their money if you get a refund check for the loans that you got. Or even if you got a full ride. Like one of my friends, she got a full ride. And she said she's saving her money from medical school. Like that's smart stuff. Like you know you want to go to medical school. Medical school. Like I know I want to go to law school. And I know law school is expensive. Therefore, I'm going to put money aside every time I get money. It might not be a lot of money. Even if it's $25, $10. Hey. At least I got something to pay out of pocket to these people. I ain't paying all that money um, back in loans. I'm paying something, you know. So, free game, y'all. Free, free game. <laughs> free game. But holding money on the gram, that's disconnect. We don't call that money over here. More of the story, guys. Start building your credit. We have bad credit. Start paying your credit off. Be financially free. You go to college, take a financial literacy class. That's one of the things that I'm going to take either in my senior or sophomore year. When, not, not sophomore year, but my senior or junior year when I'm done with all of my classes. Because like I told you before, I am majoring in political science and I'm minoring in English. I'm minoring in English. So therefore... <laughs> I'm definitely going to get pushed back just a little bit because now when you minor or double major in something, you have to take more classes. So I'm definitely going to be pushed back, but I know that my senior and junior year, I'm going to take a financial literacy class so I can understand credit more and take an investment class to understand investing more and go, and go to more panels about investing because at my school, they have so many when I say my school I have so many resources and I feel like people who they just don't be knowing because they don't be looking but so many resources and I just know that around that time I'm, my schedule is really going to be free so I'm definitely going to look in that but yeah guys I just wanted to basically for Black History Month I didn't want to do any type of video I wanted to do a video that was actually important and that will actually help the black community because it's free game guys it's, it's free game and i had to learn this too because i cut back on a lot of stuff that i used to get like i used to always get my hair done every two weeks i used to always get my nails and feet done all the time now i keep my nails on for a whole month i get it pull on pull off wigs this is a glueless wig by tan on instagram black owned <laughs> So, yeah, guys, I'm just giving you free game. That's what I wanted to do because I feel like we need to be aware of financial literacy. And I feel like that's not something that we get taught on how important credit is. Like, you can have all the money in the world. Like, you need to go start building your credit because that's what gets you whatever you want. <laughs> like, that, that that's, that's financial literacy right there. That's financial freedom right there that i feel like that's that's what's going to help us grow not you know not all that other stuff it's not going to help us at all and understanding that we need to stick together and not 
you know, try to pull each other down thinking that, oh, if I put this person on, then I ain't gonna be on. Please, and stop beefing over blocks and buildings that we don't own. Like, please, you don't own that. Your mom is written that, you are written that. You don't own that. You do get money, invest, buy. Something that you can call yours, because once it's yours, it's legally yours. Nobody can take it away from you. And it, and, it, and it goes just like that. Stop reading. Once again, that is my tribute to Black History Month. And I thank you guys for watching. And I hope that you guys got something from this video. And I know that in this video, I probably was harsh about a lot of things. But it's real. Like, it's real. Like, this is real. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that you have any questions. If you have any questions or suggestions or concerns, I am able and ready to answer them in the comments. Or if you want to give me any suggestions, because I'm all for suggestions. Like I used to not take constructive criticism well, but I really do now because it makes you a better person all around. Thank you guys for watching, keeping up with Shar. Make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm hoping that you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm.